my channel in today's video I want to do an anti haul it has been a while since I've done one and there are lots of new products that are out lots of new collections and I also want to talk about a store that I'm no longer shopping at so if you guys want to see all the things that I'm not buying and that I'm not here for in this season please keep watching I do want to preface this video by saying the anti-haul videos that I make are things that I'm currently not supporting, like I said in the intro, in this season. So I know in a couple of videos previously I've talked about, uh, what's it called, Fenty Beauty. And I have since bought a couple of items from that collection. But these are just my feelings and thoughts and opinions right now, this day, this month, <laughs> this year. Uh, my opinion can change as it probably will with some things. A lot of times there are products that I'm kind of interested but I don't really support the brand and then you guys tell me how amazing they are and I will go try them out. So I just wanted to put that out there. The first thing I wanna talk about is Sephora. I know in a video previously, either this month or last month, I talked about how I was no longer shopping at Sephora and this is the decision that I came to probably earlier this year, I believe. Uh, that is when I stopped spending my own cash at Sephora. I was still converting my points to gift cards and I was shopping through Sephora like using my points but in terms of spending any new money at Sephora I have stopped that probably in like January and the reason being is a lot of the new policies at Sephora and trends I'm just not really in support of and it's nothing huge you know I don't want to sit here and bash Sephora I did used to work for Sephora and overall it was a great experience um, but little things like changing how Rouge members who spend a thousand dollars a year in a calendar year they don't get free shipping anymore free two-day flash shipping uh, the number of samples that you get in an order is now two you can use more than one coupon code but certain coupon codes you can't use the whole gift card promotion exchanging 2500 points for a 100 dollars gift card you can't return or exchange those items just all these new policies to me they don't reflect the company that is client focused and when i worked there that was one of the biggest things they really wanted to focus on the client experience and having an amazing client experience because that is what brings people back to shopping with your company and that is the main reason why i just have decided not to shop sephora now this doesn't mean that i will never shop there again sephora still does have some great sales a couple of times a year and if there are products that I can only get at Sephora I will probably wait until those times to purchase them uh, but Sephora in terms of being my number one beauty store which that was like my top store I think at one time I had like 10,000 points I'm no longer supporting them in that way um, I just decided to be one of the people that wanted to stop complaining about it and start removing yourself from it the biggest way you show your support um, in different companies is to patronize them and to spend your hard-earned dollars there and so I decided that was gonna be me taking a stance that I am not in support of a lot of the new policies and procedures uh, I know even their return policy has now changed and that's been something that has set Sephora above the other beauty retailers is that they had such an amazing return policy and now that has all changed and because of all that it's just like what is the what am I getting out of really shopping at Sephora over other stores so now I'm really doing Ulta, Nordstrom, Macy's, Target like that is where I will be buying my beauty products for the actual um, online stores of the specific brands but yeah I just wanted to kind of get into that because I know some of you guys were saying you can't wait to hear uh, my thoughts about Sephora nothing major happened it was just me deciding to um, support other retailers that I feel do a better job at uh, supporting their customer base and ensuring client loyalty and so yeah let's get on to our other things that I am not here for the first palette I want to mention is the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette and some of you guys have actually DM me on Instagram asking what my thoughts were on this palette honestly the colors are a little too muted and just blah some of them are pretty but I just really can't see myself spending that much on a palette that I would probably just 
end up using a few colors and it would end up collecting dust um i'm at the point now in terms of my makeup collection where i'm only gonna really buy a palette if it speaks to me when i see it and that palette girl it just did not speak to me uh, i'm also not really a fan of a lot of urban decay palettes i don't know they're just not my style i think they all tend to be uh, a little too natural and I think I have enough natural shadows in my collection where I just wouldn't really gravitate towards that it's not a bad palette I just can't find a use for it in my collection the second palette is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Jackie Ina palette this is another palette now I love ABH palettes they are some of the best eyeshadow palettes out of every palette that I've owned palettes that I've tried they're also not that expensive so I tend to gravitate towards them but this Jackie Ina palette I don't know it just it didn't speak to my heart it didn't tug at my heartstrings like I would have wanted it to um and I've gotten like three or two palettes in the past year. Uh, I do like supporting fellow YouTubers and especially especially women of color. But that was just a palette that I decided to pass on. I know some of you guys have asked me about that as well. And yeah, I'm just not going to be able to do it, guys. <laughs> not going to be able to do it. Okay, the next item that I am passing on is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Foundation. And it retails for a whopping $68. Now, the price alone is a major reason as to why I'm not trying out this foundation. My kind of cap for a foundation is at $50. I just don't think that I need to spend a lot more than that to get quality products because I I found quite a few foundation brands that I like and their foundations are either a little over 50 or a little under now this foundation also has sheer to medium coverage and it's not really matte it's not for someone who has oily and problematic acneic skin like myself who likes a ton of coverage I tend to gravitate towards medium buildable to full coverage foundations I just think they are what works for me and the fact that this foundation is not really meant for someone with my skin type nor does it give me the coverage that I want and then also it is so expensive I just can't do it you guys know I love Auntie Pat she has my favorite lipsticks I'm sitting here with three of them right in front of me but in terms of the other items in her makeup line if they're going to be priced like this they've kind of priced me out uh, as a consumer because I just can't imagine spending almost $70 for a foundation also because I apply so much foundation like for me to get this desired beat that I'm wearing today I use a fair amount of foundation and I would be very hesitant to use a $70 foundation like that haphazardly so I can't do it Auntie Pat I love you but yeah I just can't now along with that product she came out with the Pat McGrath skin fetish primer which is $60 and it promises to smooth hydrate and blur uh, so one also the cost $60 I would never spend $60 on a primer that primer better have moisturizing properties flex of gold a sunscreen like I'm talking SPF 30 to 40 like $60 on a primer is it just me I don't know have any of you guys tried it maybe you like it so one I don't really use a primer if you guys have watched my foundation routines or my get ready with me's I don't use a primer I have very oily acneic skin and I've just never come across a primer that really prevents my oil from showing through like at all not even for like a couple of hours so for me a primer is just an added expense and my makeup looks pretty nice without a primer so I just I forget a primer altogether but I just cannot imagine spending $60 on a primer oh my goodness I would have a conniption <laughs> the next thing that I am passing on is the Too Faced Palm Springs palette and let me pull up a picture of this because it's been a while since I've made this list I just closed the ring on my watch 
<laughs> okay, so the Too Faced Palm Springs Dreams palette. Number one, I don't feel like these colors really are meant for people of color, individuals with a deeper skin tone. I also don't feel like these colors mesh well together. They're just not my favorite. Um, I think Too Faced does a good job of coming out with cute collections, but in terms of being real user friendly or being something that you could wear very often unless you have a job or a lifestyle that permits you to wear these type of colors on the regular to me it's just not feasible um and yeah I just I can't see these colors looking nice on someone with my skin tone so this is another thing that I'll be passing up on this is in the peaches and cream collection I don't even know what all that entails because I just feel like why does Too Faced keep coming out with all these cute little collections that are like lackluster hopefully that one has good reviews so far it does <laughs> Okay, next we have the Gingerbread Extra Spicy Too Faced Palette. And honestly, you guys, this looks like a combination of the Too Faced Gingerbread Palette and the Sweet Peach Palette. And I swear that's what they did. They took the best colors out of each of those palettes and made it into one. <sighs> Mama Too Faced, Daddy Too Faced. I believe Too Faced was is owned by a man or something. <sighs> maybe it's just me maybe everyone doesn't feel this way and they have just kind of where i've outgrown Too Faced well i mean i still love their concealer where's my concealer i use this Too Faced super coverage concealer today in the color sand um but it's something about their palettes i just like i'm not that young anymore i mean i'm not old but like i don't always want a cutesy makeup palette sometimes i want something very sleek and sophisticated and i honestly feel like they recycle a lot of their colors like this is gingerbread and sweet peach and you can't tell me anything different like that's it, that's exactly what it looks like so no thank you another thing that i am passing up on is the fenty pro filter hydration foundation and i know a lot of people actually love this foundation once again i just don't think it's for my oily acne prone skin which requires a lot of coverage also i tried out the original fenty pro filter foundation maybe that's what it's called but i couldn't really find a color that matched me my skin tone is weird because like right now i have a tan but it is fading but i get red when i get a tan but then when i don't have a tan i'm very neutral but sometimes i like to look a little darker so i just really couldn't find a shape match for the fenty and um yeah unfortunately but i would have loved to try either one of these foundations if i felt like there was a shape match for me and a formula that worked well but unfortunately there is not another thing that i'm having to pass on is the urban decay stay naked weightless foundation it's a medium coverage matte finish it's also vegan which my girl cj pointed out i believe when she did her review um once again i just like to stick to the products that i know work for me now could this foundation possibly look nice yes it looks really nice on cj but i don't know I, my skin is also very finicky like right now i have a few breakouts right there and a few right here and they're all coming in pairs and it's highly annoying but i like to just stick to at least the foundation products that my skin knows because the moment i introduce something new it just ends up being a catastrophe and honestly i've never really liked an urban decay foundation that i've tried i tried the the stay naked weightless or whatever it's called it really didn't have enough coverage for me i don't know i'm a coverage girl i like a heavy beat if i'm gonna take time to put on makeup i don't want you to be able to see my skin like that's how i am <laughs> but that foundation does look nice for the right person uh, let's see and the last two things that I am not here for honey are the Anastasia Beverly Hills and the Pat McGrath loose powders I just feel like how many loose powders do we need I watch people's videos and once again maybe this is just me like some people have three and four loose powders I just use a translucent powder I don't use any like tinted powders I don't bake I just find that it's not necessary for me day to day or even when I'm going out at night so yeah 
and I honestly feel like majority of these powders are the same some of them might be a little more finely milled but you can honestly find a nice powder from Maybelline I know when I went to Savannah one of the times this past summer I left my setting powder at home and I purchased let me see if I have it it's a Maybelline translucent powder I don't know where it is but it's a pressed powder and it's honestly so good and I think it was like four or five dollars so you don't always have to buy really nice expensive products I think sometimes it's about the ingredients that are in the higher price items but sometimes you just want to get something quick from the drugstore and I totally get that girl so yeah those are all the items I'm not here for these are all the things I am not buying in this season let me know some things that you are over or that you are not supporting uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.